All right then, my friends. So in this course, we're going to take a look at AppRite, which is a backend as a service platform that provides a whole bunch of different services that we can use in our own applications, like a NoSQL database, authentication, file storage, cloud functions, and real-time capabilities, plus some other things as well. And I found that all of these services are really intuitive and very easy to work with. Now, for those familiar with Firebase, which is another backend as a service platform, AppRite is an alternative to that, but unlike Firebase, AppRite is open source and it can also be self-hosted. So you can avoid that vendor lock-in that you would typically get with Firebase. Now, we're not going to be self-hosting in this series, but we will be using a free hosted plan, which comes with plenty of room to play around with and some generous limits. And then you can always upgrade as and when your applications scale up and need more resources. So then in this series, we're going to be focusing on the database service and we'll also be looking at real-time capabilities of AppRite as well when it comes to working with the database. Now, to demonstrate this, we'll be fleshing out a notes app like this using Next.js, which is then able to interact with the AppRite database to retrieve data, to save new data to it, and also delete data from it. And notice, when we add a new note, we see that appear in the browser in real time. And that's because we've set up a real-time subscription to the database so that whenever the data changes in the database, our app gets notified of that change and we can update the UI to reflect it. Now, although I said we'll be building this with Next.js, I'm going to be keeping the focus squarely on AppRite since this is an AppRite course. And for that reason, I've already prepped a Next.js starter project for us, which we can then just add the AppRite logic to. So you can find that starter project on this GitHub repo right here, which I will leave the link to down below the video. So to download it, just make sure you select the starter project branch. Then you can hit the code button over here to download a zip folder of all of that code. Incidentally, I've also uploaded the code for every single lesson in this course, which you can download in the same way by selecting the lesson branch from the dropdown and then downloading a zip folder of that branch. So then once that folder's downloaded, extract it and open up the contents in VS Code or some other text editor. All right, so I've done that now. And the first thing I want to do is quickly install any project dependencies. We can do that by opening up the terminal making sure you're in the root directory of the project and then just typing npm install and press enter. Now, while that's going on, I just wanna give you a quick rundown of this starter project. So you've got a basic understanding of how this application is gonna work and then we'll get right into setting up a new AppRite database. So first of all, then we have the source folder, which is where all the source files are kept. And in there, we've got the app folder. And then in here, we've got a layout file. And inside that layout, all we do is add a link to material icons so we can use icons in this project. And then we have a body tag right here, which outputs the children. So all the page content is gonna go inside here. Okay, so after that, we also have a page.csx file. And inside that, we just have this single components and we have a header at the top of that components and two components within it, the note list and also a new note form. Now, both of those components are inside this components folder right here. So the note list is to output all of the notes that we create and the new note form is to create new notes. So let's have a look at the note list uh, component first of all. And you can see right here, we basically just take these notes in as a prop initial notes and we cycle through those in the template using the map method and we output an li tag for each note. So all we're doing is just putting out a list of the different notes that we have, okay? So I said we received that as a prop and back in the page component, we can see we have the initial notes defined right here, which is just an empty array to begin with. But later on, we'll be fetching those notes from the database and passing those in as a prop. Okay, so the other component is the new note form. And inside here, we have some state content and set content, and that is hooked up to a text area inside a form so that whenever we change the value in this text area, when we type, then it's going to update the state to match that. So we're tracking what a user types in the content state. Now we attach a submit um, handler to this form, which fires this function. And inside this function is where we're going to be adding new notes to the database later on. All right, so I think that's pretty much it. We do also have some global styles right here, which I've prepped just to make it look a bit better in the browser. And we have also down here this types.d.ts file. This is where we create a custom interface, which is called notes. And this is kind of the data we'll be working with, which has three properties, an ID, created that, 
and content. So we're going to be working with that custom data type later on in the course as well. All right, so now let's run this application so we can see what it looks like in a browser to begin with. To do that, open up a terminal, make sure you're in the correct directory and just type npm run dev and hit enter. That's going to spin up a local dev server on port 3000 for us and we can view the application now at this address in the browser. So this is what it looks like in a browser, just a title, then this text area and the button at the bottom. We can add a note if we want to, but it's not going to do anything because it's not hooked up yet. All right then, so the next thing we need to do is set up a new AppRight database. And to do that, you need to go to AppRight.io and sign up for a free account. You should see a sign up link somewhere up here instead of this button. Once you've done that, you can go to the console to create a new AppRight project. But before we do that very quickly, you can see the pricing over here. So we're signing up for a free plan, which is completely free, and it comes with some very generous limits right here. So for this tutorial and for small personal projects, it's going to be absolutely fine to play around with. If you do want to upgrade, then it's going to be $15 a month to go to Pro, which is quite nice. All right then. So if you click on this button once you've signed up to go to your console, this is where you're going to manage all of your different projects that you create with AppRight. I've already created one, but I'm going to create a new one right now for this tutorial series. So let's give this a name. I'm going to call it Notes App Ninja. All right. So then we get a project ID automatically assigned to it. You can, if you want to, edit this by clicking it and giving it a different ID. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to click on next. You can choose your region. I'm going to click on create. That's just going to take a second. And then now we can see we've got this new Notes App Ninja uh, project up and running. So we have access to these different services, auth, databases, functions, messaging, and storage. What I'm going to do is go to databases because we want to set up a new database. So click on this create database thing right here. Give the database a name. I'm going to call it notes app and also a database ID. I'm going to say notes app like so. And I'm going to create this. All right. So we have a database and we're now inside that database. You can see right here, notes app. If we click on the back button, this lists all of the databases. So this one right here is the one we just created. I'm going to click on it to go into it again. And now within the database, we can create a new collection. So this is a NoSQL database and NoSQL databases typically work with collections of documents where documents are very much like objects in JavaScript where they have key and value pairs. So what I'm going to do is create a new collection and this collection is going to be called notes because we're going to be storing note documents inside this collection. Now I'm going to click on that edit button to edit the collection ID and I'm going to call this notes. It can auto generate one for you if you prefer. However, I'm going to keep this nice and short so that later on it's easy to remember in the code. All right, so I'm going to create this and now we're automatically put inside that collection. What I'm going to do is go to settings. Oh, first of all, by the way, you can see right here, it says documents and we currently have no documents in here. So what we can do is create the attributes for document objects or document, um, rather note documents. So for example, every document is going to have a property called content, right? So the key is going to be called content. The size can be how many characters? We'll just say 255. And then you can add a default value for this. It's going to be null in our case. It's going to be required as well. And then we'll create this. All right. So that is the attribute that documents in this collection must have. We can create documents right here if we want to. We're not going to do that. We're going to create them programmatically from our application later on. But lastly, I'm going to go to settings and I'm going to scroll down right here to permissions. And I'm going to add a role and go to all guests to say that any guest can create, read and delete documents in this database. We're not going to be working with updates in this series, but if you want to, you can click this as well. All right, so I'm going to press update. You can manage your permissions differently once you get a hang of AppRight databases and probably authentication as well. But for the sake of this series, we're just going to allow any guest to create, read and delete new documents. All right, so that is pretty much it, I think, for creating this database. Let's go back over here to where the database is listed. All right, then, my friends. So now we have a starter project up and running and also an AppRight database ready to work with. In the next lesson, we'll be installing the AppRight SDK into the application and using that to connect to this new database.